So what I have here today is pretty fun. So I have a procedurally generated maze on this side, or a dungeon I should say, and it's got different rooms and hallways and staircases as seen here in the, uh, the outlines and whatnot you can see. And right now the, these, this is the, the collider geometry. So this is, you know, you got your corridors and everything. And here is the player. Now you might be wondering what all these lines are. And these lines are actually the raycasts from the player for my dynamic um, occlusion system. So Unity does not have a dynamic occlusion system built in to their own software, mainly due to complexity and uh, how custom something like dynamic occlusion needs to be. Um, that's probably one of the reasons why they don't include it. So since I'm procedurally generating a maze, I'm instantiating all these objects um, a little bit like after um, you can truly bake something. So none of this can be baked, unfortunately, because I'm generating it uh, during runtime. And you might be wondering, why are these lines random? Um, well, these are scan lines emanating from the player and going out towards where we're facing. Um, so these these lines could hit any of the points that are on this screen right now. And the reason for the randomness is simply due to ease of use, and it's actually quite accurate. So this is taking 25 raycast samples um, per frame, which is probably not completely necessary. Um, but yeah, every frame that this is running, and this is running at about 500 FPS, it's uh, sending out those rays. <coughs> now as you can see, this level geometry gets a little complex, but it's only rendering what's right in front of me for now. Right? So I'm just going to keep this view zoomed out, so that way you can pay attention to things as I move throughout the maze. So as you see, when I go down here, and up here, you might have seen there that there's a little bit of pop-in, and unfortunately this is a side effect of some of the systems I used, maybe a little bit of the randomness as well, so I'm hoping to fix that at some point later on, later on down the line. So as you can see, moving throughout, you can see everything popping in, and then once something is popped in, it'll actually save its location for about five seconds before it disappears. So as you can see when I'm scanning through all these rooms, you can see my batch count goes up as well, which is up here. And my FPS goes down a little bit, and you can you can pay attention to the other numbers as well if you wish. Um, so walking throughout here, you got a lot of a lot of geometry that you wouldn't want, you know, running like this stuff over here. You wouldn't really want any of this geometry running when I'm the players over here. So that's the entire point of this system is uh, for that ease of use. So when you head down here, you know, all the other stuff starts to disappear and fade away because it's not in the direct sight of the player. So there are a few issues with the pop-in and I could probably fix those later, hopefully. But right now, it's not the biggest concern. I'm just trying to get things to work. And the way that this system works means that it should be pretty easy to expand this to other aspects of things. So if I actually have, you know, maybe some boxes in here, I can also make the boxes disappear and reappear with the room as the room disappears and reappears. So things are very chunked in uh, this system, and that makes for uh, great uh, interplay between between these systems. So hopefully I can get something working there. So yeah, let me just clip through everything here so I can get a good good estimate of what everything looks like. So pretty much when I do this all these rays are starting to cast everywhere on the screen and trying to capture the entire room and, and everything. So as you can see my FPS tanks pretty heavily. It goes from 500 or 400 maybe even 300 down to 200 sometimes and you know not very good. So as you can see I'm hitting 200 frames. My batches are about a thousand, maybe more than that. And then you do you do have frust uh, frustrum calling, which is uh, 
basically just a cone emanating from the player and that's what it will render that's that's normal but as you can see uh, I'm technically looking at almost the entire map from here if it was just using that type of occlusion um, and as you can see I'm getting about 400 frames or more and that's just rendering these rooms over here so pretty efficient overall um, I've even got gotten the uh, the samples from the Raycasts. I've, I've even taken it down to 4 and it still works. So 25 just works a little bit better. Um, specifically for if you turn around a corner and you don't want things popping in and stuff, it's, it's a little better for that. So if I head around here, maybe a little more. So sometimes it has a really good thing where it'll just immediately see everything that it needs to and sometimes it will just uh, you know take a little bit for it to see these rooms but here's the end end of the dungeon and yeah as you can see batches go way up and FPS tanks really heavily when I, when I don't see I'm going to take the same position roughly in this room just to prove a point that this definitely helps. Bam. So we went from over a thousand batches down to 63 and our FPS went up by about 400. So incredibly useful. So I think it just mainly requires a few tweaks uh, here and there in order to get this thing working pretty well. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's basically what I've worked on for the past, you know, week or so just getting the dungeon stuff working and then even then another factor to take into consideration for FPS and everything is in order to really test the FPS I turned on shadows for all these lights but these lights really don't need shadows for everything so this green light doesn't need a shadow this red one doesn't need a shadow but you can tell these shadows are being cast from each of these sources and that's really not necessary so you can you can cut even more stuff out in terms of performance with that kind of with those kind of adjustments but yeah everything here is focused on performance to some degree um, batches are incredibly important to manage and one thing that increases batches is uh, shadow casting lights because um, of the way that the renderer works and then yeah so the main idea is just to distribute load from the CPU or from the GPU to the CPU, and then you can kind of see that here. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. And yeah, you have the shadow casters here that gives you a good estimate of uh, what's actually going on. But yeah, hope you enjoyed that little quick, quick talk, and I will see you some other time.